Hi there guys, welcome to another edition of Jonesy's Vlog. I think it's going to be quite a short, straightforward, simple, to the point sort of vlog today. It's time to go Neil. Honestly, it, you've just completely outstayed your welcome. Um, you know, last night was just another shambles, really. It started off exactly like it did against Wolves. We seemed to be very dominant, Middlesbrough seemed very poor at the back. We had the chances and, and we didn't put them away. Apparently McCormack had a, a really simple, easy chance that he should have scored in the first half. Steve Morrison, second half, had a, a clear header who and he managed to, to head it straight at the goalkeeper. And it's these these chances that he, he then came out afterwards, Warnock, and decided to say that, you know, he's baffled at why we're missing all these chances. Well, if you remember a good couple of weeks ago, Neil, you, you actually decided to sell our top goal scorer at the club, so that might have something to do with it. Um, but everything, I mean, it started yesterday really. Um, well, st to start with, I've tried to be a supporter of, of Warnock through through most of his time at the club, you know, especially w when he, he joined. There were a lot of fans that weren't happy with that decision. At the time, I thought it was a great decision. He was the, the perfect guy, I thought, to come in, um, stabilise the club for that season, and then push on for this season. And you know, even through this season, I've I've been trying to defend him when other other fans have been having a go at his his tactics and his his team selections and things. And as you've seen over the past few weeks, I've started to to get more frustrated with him. But last night really was just the absolute final straw. Yes, like I was going to say, it started with the news that Ross Barkley wasn't even in the squad. So you know, he, he had no involvement in in the game uh, against Wolves at the weekend. Not even in the squad today. Uh, sorry, last night, and uh, Warnock comes out afterwards saying that he's going back to Everton uh, because he couldn't guarantee David Moyes that he'd be getting any uh, any chances in the squad. So apparently Warnock thinks that the midfield that we have at the moment uh, is is better than Ross Barkley, you know, a potential, well, definite future Premier League star because Everton definitely think a lot of him. He's clearly talented. He's probably one of the most talented. Uh, pacey uh, players that we've had at the club this year and Warnock felt that he, he couldn't guarantee him football you know there's Michael Brown in that team who last few games has done alright last night I didn't hear his name mentioned once in that game he just decided to go missing we've got Rudy Austin who we don't need to say anything about Luke Varney David Norris, Michael Tong how he thinks they can be better players than Ross Barkley I really do not have a clue so that was the first first thing really and I thought well that just sets the night up perfectly then his team he decided for it to be unchanged from the weekend even though it clearly wasn't good enough if you know Dean Saunders came out after that game saying it was very easy football to defend against and play against it's just a hoof ball playing for set pieces exactly the same last night by the sounds of things and again the the final straw for me was you know f failing and refusing to make any substitutions you know waiting until it was about 70 minutes and it was clear that changes were needed the Leeds United fans started singing Warnock changed the team and he decided to sarcastically applaud back to the fans which just says it all really for me his, his heart isn't it in in this at all or at the club and, and to practically take the piss out of the fans is just you, you just don't do that you definitely don't do that with Leeds United anyway and then to rub rub salt into the wounds a couple of minutes later Middlesbrough go and get the goal and what does he do after that he decides to finally make some changes so I can you know that that proves that the changes were needed you know, I think El Hajju probably should have been starting the game. I wouldn't have started with Paddy Kenny. I'd have given Jamie Ash down a chance. I would not have started with Brown. Uh, I would definitely... Well, I mean, if it was me, I'd still have Barkley there, and Barkley would have been in the squad anyway. Um, and then, of course, he comes out with his usual interviews afterwards, blaming everyone and everything but himself. Uh, he never decide, You know, he never apologises for any of the displays. You know, an apology last night would have been nice, really. But no, no, he managed to, to well, practically blame blame McCormack for that miss, 
when at the end of the day if Becchio would have been there I'm sure he'd have got a goal last night especially with his record against Middlesbrough um, he had oh yes he also managed to have another dig at Becchio where one of the journalists said do you think um, you know fans would say that if Becchio was in those uh, positions they would have done better and he said that's a ridiculous statement He's just really lost the plot for me. He's just lost. Well, he's lost the backing of the fans. He he said when he he came or a good couple of months ago anyway that he would only leave the club when he's lost. He feels he's lost the fans. Well, we couldn't have made it clearer last night. There were chance of one out. Booze at the end. I didn't see one person on Twitter backing him up. Uh, no one in support of him. So I'm sorry, Neil. It's time to go. I think you're a great guy. You know, you can be funny at times, but I don't want a great funny guy in charge of my football club and, and running the team, really, anymore. So, if if changes are going to be made, and you know, they need to be made now. You know, if, if we don't start changing it now, then this, you know, we, we're eight points off relegation. People are saying the season isn't over because we're eight points off the playoffs. So, in that case, we're also in a relegation battle then because we're eight points from relegation and to be honest the way we're going and the way we're playing we could quite easily be in a relegation battle we lose against Blackpool at the weekend quite a hard game against Peterborough the way they've been playing recently then we're going to be right down there aren't we it's such an awful league where teams are winning one week and losing the next if we keep losing then those teams that were poor before are going to be winning and they're going to be going above us so the season isn't over it might be over for, for the playoffs, but it's not over for maybe a relegation battle. And So yeah, GFH, David Hay, Salim Patel, please change it now for God's sakes. Nigel Atkins is out there, you know, no club has, has managed to, to snap him up. Get rid of Warnock, get him in. He'd be a perfect manager to possibly stabilise for this season um, and, and really be in place so he can get his team... Uh, sorted and get some players in for next season hopefully by that time GFH will have been able to find some other investors uh, someone who's actually got some money to, to spend on, on proper players instead of you know your Michael Tongs and, and people like that um, and and that really would that really would be perfect um, it was just so negative and disappointing last night and I think it was just the last straw for, for so many people I mean, it's that you know he brings these players in that you know he, he was excited about about bringing Michael Tong in. He was excited about finally signing Ryan Hall, saying he's a fantastic uh, star of the future. And then he doesn't play the bloody players. I just I really do not understand it. You know, he's want we want pace in that midfield. Ryan Hall has shown that in the little time that he's had at the club, but he's shown that he's got pace. He takes players on and he gets crossed into the box, and that's what we need. Luke Varney doesn't do that. It just it just beggars belief with some of the decisions you know letting Dom, Dom Pollyon go out on loan to Sheffield United a promising young talent who's shown that he's clearly got the ability to play in the championship and he's trying to send him out on loan and I mean he's gone to Sheffield United so that it's just it's just one thing after another so like I say just a straight to the point uh, vlog today guys uh, I just really had to, to let that out let me know what you think. If there are any people still supporting Warnock, then you know, please, please do let me know. Those that agree with me, let me know your thoughts. Who would you want in as next manager? I, you know, I've mentioned Nigel Atkins there. Some people saying Paolo Di Canio. Obviously, Gus Poyet always gets a mention. So yes, as always, guys, let me know your thoughts on all of that. So either here on the comments or at Twitter at Chris Jones LUFC, and I will probably be speaking to you. Um, bit busy this week i will try and speak to you sunday night maybe after the man city game which of course we'll probably go on and win now won't we um, but yes that's probably the next time i'll speak to you guys thank you very much for watching and i will see you soon